Hey guys, Glenn here. Today we're reviewing the Ender 3 V3KE. I'm actually really excited to review this printer because I think a lot of people need to know about it. Let's get into it. Okay, so first off, let's go over the specs. I'm gonna go over what this printer actually gives you for the money, and just to let you know, the money is cheap. It is $279 on sale right now, normal price $299, and uh, the, <laughs> the value you get with this is incredible. This is the Ender 3 V3 KE, which is the nicer of the V3s. Let's go over the specs. Um, I'm gonna go back to this actually review because I noticed that there's 50 reviews here, and it's only three and a half stars. We're gonna go back to why this is. Now, also, it looks like they're giving you a free gift. I didn't get a t-shirt, however, I got the printer for free. So thank you so much, Creality, for sending me the printer to test out and put on my YouTube channel. I love you. You can also choose to get a PLA with it. Uh, I guess you get two Nebula plus a Nebula camera. Um, you can get a filament dry box, or you can get two PLAs, a PEI build plate, and a nozzle kit. Now, this printer boasts some pretty impressive claims. It's got a smart Creality OS, which is true. It's all Wi-Fi. Uh, I've used it. It's awesome. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. 500 millimeter per second uh, max print speed. Yes, it's got that uh, with some flaws sometimes. An x-axis uh, linear rail. It says the precise linear rail on the x-axis has a carriage slide containing ball bearings, making each move accurate, steady, and frictionless. Built out of stiff steel, it will stay as new even after a long time use. Now, it claims this Benchy, uh, which is in 15 minutes. I printed the Benchy. You're going to see that, how that Benchy came out. Smart algorithms, better print quality. It's got input shaping, uh, mitigates the printer's vibrations for minimal ringing and ghosting. Motion advance optimizes the feeding flow for fewer blobs and oozes. Control and monitor smartly from anywhere. Uh, the fun goes beyond the limits of space. With land printing and cloud printing, every aspect of your 3D printer can be controlled from a PC with Creality Print or a phone with Creality Cloud app via Wi-Fi. With multiple printers online, you can manage them efficiently as a print farm. This is true um, and it works awesome. Smart self-test for Z offset, auto leveling and more with just one tap. Uh, works pretty good. Real-time model preview and vivid motion graphics of printing parameters. Superior hot end to meet greater challenges 60 watt ceramic heater able to fully melt filaments with high speed printing by metal copper plus aluminum alloys effectively preventing thermal creep enabling 300 degrees celsius printing that is very hot double fans for rapid model cooling each side of the print head has a model cooling fan together they cool the freshly printed section rapidly and evenly now your prints are always in good shape Still compact, but offers much more. Occupies less space, weighs less, but has richer functions, giving you more liberty to play out your creative desire. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably the same, probably the same uh, footprint as a Prusa um, or most 3D printers. It's, it's not significantly bigger or smaller than a normal 3D printer in my mind, but there is no enclosure, so it's not massive. You can fit a lot of them. If I was gonna switch out all my Prusas behind here to this printer, um, it would be a pretty cheap upgrade and they would just go where the Prusas go. Now here they're talking about more filaments to print with. They have a lot of filaments and we're not gonna go into the filaments. Uh, we're just talking about the printer and only the printer today. Three ways of printing, print via USB, uh, LAN printing uh, with Wi-Fi or cloud printing with Wi-Fi. So LAN is through the computer and then the cloud is through the phone, both work flawlessly for me so far. Get printing started like a breeze. Quick assembly, self-test with one tap. Auto filament loading. Uh, yes, all true. Um, you're gonna see the exact process. So you know if you really wanna buy this printer or not, I'm gonna show you how I built it and everything. So you know every little thing. Um, it wasn't the easiest to put together, but it wasn't the hardest by any means. Um, it was one of the easiest for sure. Uh, the only easier one that I have put together so far besides for pre-assembled printers um, would be the Anchor Make M5C was was a little bit easier. Uh, I guess it took like a, f like a few minutes less, but 
I would definitely not have that as a deciding factor. It's super easy to put together. Maybe, maybe like five minutes to put together. Now you can also use the AI camera to watch and record your prints. It's got a vibration compensation sensor. Now this is the difference between the Ender 3V3 SE versus the KE. Uh, the KE is just the better model. You're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck. Um, and we were talking, you know, a $200 printer versus a $208 printer. It's not anything to me. I would just rather get the $280 printer because you don't sacrifice. You know, with, with a little bit more bang for your buck, you're, you're gonna get 500 millimeters per second versus 250. You're essentially getting double the printer. Now, if you wanna go to their website, I'll link it down below uh, where you can purchase this. Um, and they have a video explaining all this stuff. Now, for customer reviews, I was surprised that I got a 3.4 out of five. Most of these reviews are user error, in my opinion. Um, pretty much a lot of people um, got a print blob or issues with bed adhesion. Bed adhesion is a problem with a lot of printers. I didn't have any problems with this bed. Um, I've had a lot of other printers that I tested that the bed, the adhesion was terrible, but you have to always watch your first layer go down. If you don't, you're asking for problems. So watch the first layer, watch it for a little bit, make sure it's actually gonna keep printing uh, because if the first layer doesn't go down, you're gonna get a big old print blob or a spaghetti blob. Um, it's, it's not fun. I teach you how to fix that if that is an issue in my other videos on my channel, but always watch the first layer go down. That's what the majority of these complaints seem to be. Now for the unboxing, setup, and ultimate decision on should you buy this printer? See what's in the package. Ooh, baby. Some literature. A bunch of extra parts. The screen. Power cord. Doohickey. Doohickey too. here you're in luck lots of stickers gotta feed this thing through here and we're gonna <laughs> snippers yeah, pretty nice quality. They're springy. I like them. Now this, this is just white filament. It says hyper. Metal grease. Thumb drive. I'm gonna use one of these. Definitely get yourself a set. I'll leave a link down below. Doing any maintenance with a 3D printer, definitely you need these. I'm gonna put these little black screws in there. They're gonna be 2.5 millimeter. You screw them down. We're gonna carefully tip this back. So we can screw the, the screws in here and in here. You're gonna use the M3 14 by six. It's also going to be a 2.5 millimeter. And you're gonna snug them down onto the lock washer. Very easy. Now we're gonna stand it back up. Next step is to install the screen. We'll be using these screws, which are conveniently a 2.5 millimeter. Next is to install the material rack, which is these screws with 3.0 millimeter. Put this on and tighten it up like that. Make sure you feed it in through the back here, like so. Not over, all right. And it'll click in just like a graphics card. 
Next two is install these things with the 2.0 millimeter. Next, we're gonna turn it around and wire it according to their instructions. Get the of the black positioning label of the flexible flat cable FFC stuck at the line claw. Get the of the black. <laughs> no idea. No idea. I don't know why they don't just um, like have one English person proofread these things. That would be kind of cool. Just like one American or anybody that speaks English, just one of them. And then it would make sense. So this is supposed to get stuck here, I guess. <laughs> this pouch is supposed to be stuck here, so it is what it is. I mean, I guess I gotta force it over. I don't like doing that, but okay, that's what they want. All right, you're gonna connect this. Now I did have to go into the back of the machine here and switch it to 115, which is strange because it's sold in the United States. Um, so yeah, whatever. Oh yeah. Ew. All right. Please place the printing platform. Okay. Looks placed. Start. Oh. Here we go, baby. And she starts. She's gonna check herself. And I'm sure you guys don't want to see this, so I'm just gonna skip it and move on. Self test completed. Okay. All right, so it tracks, it's interesting. All right. There's nothing in local, USB drive, ooh. Hold on. Well, they're calling it a boat, not a benchy, but does this say 16 minutes? What? No, no way. Okay, so they also gave me this Hyper Series filament. Um, this one is, they gave me two of them. This one is gray. So let's use that. Okay, so how do you load filament? You're gonna take, you're gonna press this. You're gonna go to 200, all right? Once it's heated up, if it already is heated up, you're gonna fill, go through the filament sensor here, okay? It goes around like this, go, and then goes down here. You're gonna pull this thing back with the left hand, put this in with the right hand, and then you're going to extrude. Okay, so I thought 200 would work. Uh, 200 does not work, it has to be 240. Uh, I guess maybe they had clogging problems. Not sure, but let's extrude. Okay, let's extrude, uh, let's heat it up. Now you don't have to do it that way. It seems like if you just put it to 240 and then you do it with two hands, you pull this thing back and push it in, it kind of just feeds all the way through and then you just gotta make sure it's coming out already. So, boom. We're gonna go with English today. Yep, sure, why not? Ooh, Wi-Fi technology. Be right back. All right, next. We're going east. All right, now let me show you the software and show you how it prints. Okay, so here I am on Creality Cloud, uh, which uh, you do from your computer. I'm updating the firmware as well. Okay, so if you want to print from your computer, um, you're gonna have to get the Creality Print FDM slicer from downloads, go to downloads, and then click on software. We're gonna get the latest model. We're gonna install it, slice it, see how it goes. Here we are in Creality slicing software, Creality Print. Um, you can use this. Let's slice it here and then send it over, see how it does. All right, so let's click land printing. Let's confirm it. We do not have a device in here. We got to uh, manually add, print it through the Wi-Fi, the IP. What? We're scanning. Scanning for the printer. It came up with the printer. Look at that. Add. Boom. 
my new printer's on here pretty cool software so um let's go to preview land printing confirm send g code or one click printing which one should we do let's do one click printing be sure the platform is empty before starting the print yes okay and we're printing let's see how it's gonna come out oh my god so this is the speed it is very fast will it print in quality I don't know. We're about to find out. Because uh, this thing only takes 16 minutes. And it looks like a regular size sense uh, benchy. So. Oh my god. Look how fast this fucking thing is. This. That is wicked fast. Okay. So now, first for the Cali Dragon. A uh, little bit of stringing, which is pretty much normal. Um, it's, it's actually really good print because I could just knock that off. Show you. This is 0.2 millimeters. Every one that I uh, played with was 0.2. Layer height. Get a good look. That's the quality of the Cali Dragon. Next, we got a Benchy. Pretty decent quality, super fast. I think it was like 20 minutes. A little stringy, but I mean, pretty good quality for really, really fast. And I also did a stress test tower. This is the words. See, the words are pretty good. A little bit of ghosting. But I mean, these are all in super fast, like 500 millimeters a second. How detailed we can get. For a sub $300 printer, this is crazy. Um, also, the overhangs, 80 degrees. I mean, it had no problem. Absolutely incredible. You know, and of course, I can get finer if I want to print finer, but I only have so much time to review these things. Now, would I buy this printer? Yes. Okay. They gave it to me for free. I'm happy to have it. I'm actually considering changing my whole print farm out with these printers because I pretty much only print PLA, uh, so it's it, I don't need anything too extreme, but the printers are so cheap and I can make an entire print farm for, I could replace this whole print farm for like three to $4,000, which may seem a lot to you right now, but once you start making money in this space, it's nothing. I can actually, I could expand very fast uh, when I was first doing this, I was buying Prusas for 1400 with the shipping and everything and the tax. Uh, it, it was a big investment. Now you can start a print farm for so cheap. So this is this is pennies on the dollar compared to like it's like 10% of what I was paying. It's crazy. Now you have the ability to, to start a print farm for so cheap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Watch this video next if you want to learn how to make money with your 3D printer.